Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. We've had a lot of rain the last couple of days. Nothing to do with the Hurricane Florence coming up. It may affect us, it may not, we don't know yet. We're still going away into Pennsylvania this weekend. I hope to be back in time for the live stream this Saturday evening, but theories. Wow, there are some really weird theories out there about what you can do to circumvent some of the systems that are built into these printers that we use today, okay? Well, my job is to try to come up with ways to get around some of these limitations. But some of the suggestions that I've heard from some users really are just beyond belief. And some of them are, well, let me take a drink first. The idea that I can just continually top off a cartridge and fool the P800 or fool the Pro 1, you just can't do that. Really, you can try all you want, it's not going to work, okay? There are many things working under the radar, so to speak, that control ink levels, low ink warnings, and so forth, and ultimately the empty condition of the cartridge. There's no way that you can, you know, take a cart that slow or the light is blinking, fill it up with ink, pop it back in and have it all of a sudden become full. Well, that happens only one time. And that's when you have auto reset chips on a printer that allows you to use them. They go empty, you refill it, of course, and it resets back to full. But the cartridge has no clue whether you refilled it or not, unless it has some kind of internal sensor. These cartridges do. PGI 29s, Pro 10 cartridges, PGI 72s also do. And the CLI 8s or CLI 42s as well. This is a Pro 10 cartridge. Internally, they have either a prism or a light pipe that can sense the presence of ink or the level of very low, I should say low level of ink, and it will then generate that low ink warning. But also, the printer is keeping tabs of how many droplets of ink it is generating, ejecting, whatever you want to call it, and then it keeps track of that, and that information is sent to the chip, and gradually the ink levels are brought down and down and down. And eventually you will hit that low warning, either physically triggered by one of those internal light pipes or simply by the chip from the information that it receives. So don't ever believe, don't ever believe, don't ever believe that you can simply top off a cart when it reaches that blinking light situation and have it magically be restored to full. It's not going to happen with any original OEM cartridge with an OEM chip that I know of, okay? And I've been surrounded by printers for about 10 years now. So yeah, if that was the case, oh, I would be one happy camper, especially with my Pro 1. There will be no need for me to buy single-use chips. Why would I bother? Just top them off and they magically are brought up to full. No, that's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen, folks. And printers like the P800 that are locked in North America, against the use of any kind of third-party resettable type chip, not gonna happen. I cannot modify this cartridge. This is an original P800 cartridge. I cannot modify this like I do with my T60, like I do with my T58s, I should have said. I could do that with these, but not with these. When I reset those, that magenta cartridge, I think it's a light, vivid light magenta. It still has the same vivid light magenta ID number for that particular chip. And each of them are different. Same thing here. This is a cyan, light cyan, and it has a light cyan ID code for that chip. Even if I could reset it, the ID code is read only. It cannot be rewritten to. It cannot be re. Uh, it cannot be erased and then rewritten to with a new, recognizable code, a correct code. No, it cannot. So the printer will see it as a reused card, and magically now it's at a higher level than it was when I remembered it. That's what the printer is saying. 
So therefore, you're trying to cheat me. I will not accept it and I will reject it. So that's how that works. So the fact that some printers allow you to use resettable type cards, the ID codes never change. And those printers don't care that they keep seeing the same ID code, even though the levels all of a sudden magically are not too full. So that's how that system works. So don't think for a minute that you can just top off a cartridge and pop it in and all of a sudden the printer will say, oh, you are now full. No, it's not gonna happen. So that is it. Now I wanna leave you with a couple of suggestions and a really good idea that I'm gonna give you in the next video. The next video that I do about Red River Papers, you gotta look at that one first, okay? Now, I have three Facebooks. One is my family Facebook, and one is my printing Facebook page that I created thinking that was going to be a good place for me to just talk only about printing. Of course, that wasn't the case. All kinds of non-printing stuff was going on among the people who signed up and I became friends with. Well, I no longer look at that page at all. So I created a group dedicated to printing. Now, you can friend me if you want to. You're not gonna get any kind of printing knowledge and you're not gonna get any kind of printing information out of that one particular page. If you really want to learn about printing and kind of join the fraternity and sorority combined of over 1200 plus printing or photo printing maniacs, join my group. Don't join the regular page, okay? That's yet another general page you will not get much satisfaction out of that page. And I did that by mistake, and I think now I'm gonna have a problem because if I delete that or disable that page, I might actually end up losing my group. Don't wanna do that. So join the group rather than ask to be a friend of the other page, unless you just absolutely want to. But anyway, join the group. You do that via a link that I provide in the description. You need to read the description in order to see all of those links that I provide you. So it's there, join the group. That way it's all about photo printing, printers, inks, refillable systems, you name it, it covers the gamut. That is it, thank you so much. Don't forget this Friday, I may do the live stream, but if I find out that we can be back on time on Saturday for our visit to our friends up in Pennsylvania, then I will then schedule the live stream at its normal time, 6 o'clock p.m. Saturday evening. So we'll see you then. The next video that I do about Red River Papers will cover Palo Duro satin. Now, I didn't even know that they had a satin paper called Palo Duro. Okay, Palo Duro usually implies very high-end papers, and I've already done soft gloss rag and Palo Duro etching and fell in love with those two papers. So I bought a roll of Palo Duro satin for less than $60, 17 inch by 100 whopping feet roll of this media. I have it loaded on my PA-100 and I have a standard image right here that I'm gonna show you in that very next video. So stay tuned for that. It may be a video from now, it may be two videos from now. So please watch that and then you will see how it performed. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. As always, happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.